Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Raphael Grossi. He is the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency and he joins us from the headquarters of the UN Agency in Vienna. Thank you very much for being with us. My pleasure. Vladimir Putin warned that the danger of a nuclear were getting bigger. The US government said those words were irresponsible. What is your reaction? Well, my reaction is that, of course, uh, nuclear war uh, can never be won and must never be fought, as someone said. So we expect uh, these words to be heeded. We expect that uh, no use of uh, nuclear weapon whatsoever will take place in this or in any other, or in any other conflict. Uh, obviously, in Ukraine, uh, the main concern, and I guess your main concern, is the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. This is Europe's uh, largest. What is currently the situation in and around that plant? The situation is variable, it's variable, and it's uh, still very precarious. I have defined it as, as such. Um, the, the plant has been uh, subject to repeated attacks directly or being affected by recurrent um, interruptions in the external power supply affecting its essential cooling functions and thereby um, bringing the possibility of a nuclear accident closer. So at the moment, uh, we have I have my teams there, as, as, as perhaps your audience already knows, after my visit, my personal visit back this year in the month of September. Uh, we, we left a detachment, a group of experts uh, from the IEA uh, who are assisting, providing technical support and also uh, giving um, uh, material for our al almost daily updates on the situation there. So, as I was saying, the situation remains extremely unstable and I am uh, busy uh, trying to get uh, protection uh, for the uh, installation through the establishment of a protection zone. I am working on this. Right. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, the Russian Defense Minister, Sergei Shoigu, accused Ukraine of continuing to shell uh, the area of uh, the plant. The Ukrainians, obviously, and Western countries claim that it is Russia uh, attacking. What is your assessment? My assessment is that there is, of course, this is a war. And then you would expect uh, this uh, crossed narratives, uh, mutually contradicting uh, narratives. Um, uh, whoever is behind it, I've said, is playing with fire and it must be stopped. This is why I've decided that the most efficient, direct and necessary way forward is to establish the protection. Uh, the issue of attribution is something that uh, would leave as nowhere, uh, since uh, uh, to do that you would need a number of uh, parameters uh, that would be very difficult to collect at a time of war. What we can do now is to protect it, to have a political commitment from both sides that a military, that a nuclear power plant is not, should never be a legitimate military target. Just a few days ago, you said that you hope to reach an agreement with Russia and Ukraine to establish a security zone around the plant by the end of the year. Uh, just uh, two days ago, the Russian foreign ministry spokesperson, Maria Zakharova, said, I quote her, there can be no talk of any withdrawal of the plant from Russian control or uh, giving control to a third party. This is Russian territory. Yeah, I think we are we are mixing or or um, not 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 necessarily you, but there has been a little bit of a confusion uh, about that. One thing is the the territorial situation, the occupation of the plant, which, by the way, neither the UN nor the IAEA recognizes. One thing is this: uh, the 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 return, the full return of uh, the plant to, to Ukraine. This is one thing, and I think the quote you just mentioned refers to that. The establishment of a protection zone is something different. It's a temporary measure 
pending uh, a final outcome, which we hope will come when, when peace uh, prevails, um, that is necessary because we need to prevent a nuclear accident now, irrespective of whether the plant goes back to Ukraine. And we hope this is the case. But uh, as I say, the, the quote you just uh, repeated refers, uh, in my opinion, mainly to the, the, the status, the ownership and the territorial occupation of the plant rather than the protection of, of the installation. So are you still hopeful, because the end of the year is really around the corner, that you will indeed reach such a deal? I know you've discussed this with the French president. I understand you want to go back to meet Vladimir Putin in Moscow. Is this a realistic objective? I, I, think, I think it is realistic. I think it is possible. Of course, it is a very complex uh, thing uh, to do uh, at the time of war. Any any agreement of any sort um, between the contending sides is, is extremely difficult to get. This is why this is taking some time. Uh, I expect uh, to see President Putin again, and I know that he would be prepared to meet with me again. And I know as well that President Zelensky would be equally uh, prepared to continue our work. I've been seeing him regularly, by the way. So uh, this is an excellent basis for me to work diplomatically and technically to get to that. If it was not the case, they would be, they would not be uh, expressing their willingness uh, to meet. Um, so end of the year, as any uh, dateline or deadline has an element of artificiality, if you want. But what I what I mean is that we need to get to this before the end of the year. I should perhaps could, I could even say before Christmas, if possible, before the end of the week, if I could. Uh, all I'm trying to say is that we need to do this now. It's not impossible. We have a credible, viable proposal on the table. So um, it is possible. I want to turn to uh, the other uh, big issue for the agency, Iran. Uh, Iran yes. recently informed the IAEA that it is tripling its capacity to enrich, enrich uranium to 60%. This is close to military grade, 90%. Uh, and uh, it seems that Iran has decided uh, that it wants to be in a position to produce a nuclear weapon. Well, you know, motivations is not something I like to get into. It's a subjective area, and the IEA, as a technical inspectorate, does not get into what could be behind uh, a certain decision. Um, rightly said, uh, the fact that they are tripling, that they are increasing in such a fast way the ratio uh, of uh, production of uh, nuclear material is something that requires engagement from uh, Iran with us, and um, most importantly, the clarification of a number of issues that have been pending for a long time, where they have not given us explanations about the presence of uranium in certain areas of the country, which were not supposed to be um, having any nuclear material. So everything comes together. You have this activity, which is moving faster and faster, and at the same time, a certain reluctance uh, from the part of Iran to work with us. So I'm trying to engage with them. We have been passing messages. I hope, I really hope, that Tehran decides to reset the relationship with me, with the IAEA, and have a discussion at a political level to, to be able to move together into the clarification of these things. This is all the IAEA requires and needs. Right. Uh, given that uh, the nuclear talks, and also because of all what's happening in, in Iran, are essentially uh, dead, uh, uh, how difficult uh, do you foresee this to be? In mid-November, you mentioned in a report that you were hoping that there would be a meeting with the Iranian official by the end of November. We are already into 
uh, December. Uh, so is there any hope uh, that there could be uh, a meeting with the Iranian officials and that they could re-engage with the agency and maybe also that with the West? That was very, very, very correct. That was yet another frustration. We had agreed uh, on something and uh, they decided to cancel. Uh, this meeting. Now we are trying to work on, on, on a new date. But apart from dates and meetings, as I just said, what we need now is to sit down around the, around the table and decide seriously that we are going to be working together uh, with a purpose, with uh, honesty, and with a desire to come to clarification. Having a meeting or two meetings or setting a date uh, really will not, will not, will not do it. Uh, I, I really hope uh, that we are going to be moving to a different kind of interaction with Tehran. This is needed, and the IEA, and I myself, I am ready. How uh, urgent is that? The clock is ticking, obviously. I think we need, we need to move. I am expecting a sign that they want uh, to do this. Rafael Grossi, I want to thank you very much uh, for appearing here on the France 24 interview. Thank you for watching it.